Thank you. Thank you, Anla, for your very hard work and dedication. We've been working together on juvenile justice uh, for several months now in, in, in Congress and appreciate uh, your leadership and also appreciate the leadership of, of, of your panelists. I, um, one is from my district, Judge Jones, who has an excellent background. I served with him in the legislature. He, he uh, directed the juvenile justice uh, program in Virginia, now is a sitting juvenile court judge. So he has an excellent background, and my district is very well represented on this, on this panel. And of course, Vince Giraldi has been uh, before many uh, congressional panels giving us guidance on what we need to do. But I want to thank the Annie E. Casey Foundation for this research because this is the kind of research and information that we actually need. We've been having this debate for many years, decades, on crime policy. And basically, it goes, shall we, we have to make a choice, you know, shall we reduce crime or shall we play politics? And unfortunately, you can't do both at the same time. Uh, we know what to do to reduce violent crime. You start with a continuum of services, starting with Teen pregnancy prevention, so fewer babies will be born into dysfunctional families, prenatal care to reduce mental health and learning disabilities, early childhood education, and nurse visits for infants to make sure the parents are uh, doing the right thing, Head Start, make sure they read by th third grade, uh, after school programs, a trajectory towards college. If you put people on that trajectory, you know they're not gonna get in trouble, or you can play politics. Three strikes and you're out, mandatory minimums, life without parole. And if you can get it to rhyme, it's even better. If you do the adult crime, you do the adult time. That must be good policy because it rhymes. As uh, President uh, Nelson pointed out, that will actually increase the crime rate. As a matter of fact, over the years of this emotional approach, we have now the highest incarceration rate of any place on earth by far. We lock up more people proportionally than anywhere most countries, it's 50 to 200 per 100,000. In the United States, it's over 700 per 100,000. In the minority communities, some, communi some states have over 4,000 per 100,000 locked up. 50 to 200 in most places, uh, over, over 4,000 in some communities. And that's not free. We're paying money that could have been spent more effectively in prevention programs. And so we have now what the Children's Defense Fund calls the cradle to prison pipeline. Babies are born or on the way to prison, and we do nothing about it but this rhetorical flourish and nonsense that, uh, that, that we need to, uh, to, to do away with. Yesterday we had a hearing in the Crime Subcommittee where uh, researchers pointed out that trying more juveniles as adults not only fails to reduce crime, but it probably increases crime and increases gang membership because when they go to jail, they have to join the gang. They might not have been in the gang to begin with. Send them to jail, they have to join the gang. So if the one thing about uh, this study is it helps us because we know this nonsense does not reduce crime, probably increases crime. It is more expensive. And so you have an ineffective, probably counterproductive waste of the taxpayer's money but the only reason politicians do it is because it's good politics. It helps them get elected. When people start getting the facts, it'll lose its political appeal, and then we can get on to what we know makes the most sense. So I want to thank the Annie E. Casey Foundation for, again, coming out with facts and figures so that we can get some good policy from a good policy perspective and stop the nonsense and do what's right for our children. Thank you very much, President Nelson.